Welcome back to Visible Theology. I am Manny Benton, and I have on another awesome guest. This month is March, and as some of you may know, it is Women's History Month, and I am I'm really interested in having on women on Visible Theology in the month of March and just celebrating them as artists and as creatives. So today I have on Chan Mi. How are you? Did I get I, it right? Uh, yeah, no, you got it. Perfect. I got it. <laughs> can you tell you everyone? Him. Can you tell everyone what that means? I think that's it's so cool. Yeah, um, it means praise the Lord. Um, you can see in Korean Bible, um, Chan Mi less Chan Mi. <laughs> so yeah, praise the Lord. That's awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. I'm, I'm happy to have you on. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I'm excited yeah. to be able to share my story and just hear from you. And yeah, just, just happy to be here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. So I always start off with asking an artist their testimony. I believe that's one of the greatest ways as Christians to kind of get mm -hmm. to know one another. So feel free to share however much or however little you want to. Sure. Um, so let's see. Um, <laughs> I was born in Korea. Um, my dad actually is a pastor. He still is a pastor. Um, wow. So I grew up as a pastor's kid. They call it PK. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always, you know, in that church environment. I actually was living in the church for a while. And yeah, I've always known the Bible and heard of God, but it wasn't, I would say it wasn't until I came to the States um, for study abroad um, in my junior year in college. Um, I, I, I almost, um, I say uh, to people that God brought me physically out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. from, you know, apart from my parents and my home church to reestablish my faith um, on my own. Um, so he kind of removed me from yeah. there. And um, when I first came here, I got to see, uh, meet a lot of people in faith and young people who were passionate for the Lord. And and I was like, wow, they are really passionate for the Lord. I don't yeah. understand how and why. Um, I, I was a very ambitious kid. Um, I was full of dreams and I wanted to conquer the world in different ways. And <laughs> Yeah, but the Lord met me here. Um, the Lord saw me um, in my brokenness and um, the ways that I needed to really turn away from my own ways of living and yeah. just living for the Lord. So I saw the need for a savior, my own need for a savior. And yeah, the Lord met me really powerfully. And I, was, wow. I would cry every single service for about a year. Um, just kind of weeping and in tears and in gratitude and repentance and joy. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's when I I would say that's when I really met the Lord um, as an adult. Yeah. Um, and ever since then, the Lord has walked me through different circumstances. But yeah, He's been my Savior, the Lord, um, great Father, good good Father, good Shepherd. Um, my best friend, the lover of my soul. I am still walking and getting to know him. And sometimes I'm still a little rebellious, but he <laughs> brings me back, you know, yeah. gently. Yes. So yeah, here I am. That's my short story of, yeah, my faith. Yeah, praise God, praise God. As, as a fellow PK, I always, um, always tell other younger PKs that I know that mm -hmm. there's going to be this moment in your life that you're going to realize that you can't kind of mooch fully off of your parents' faith. Yeah. Like you have to have your own faith. And yeah. I know I had that moment when I was, I think in middle school, um, when my grandfather sat me down on the couch and, and offered me, it was my first time ever being offered like an opportunity to, um, to lead worshiping church. I'd never did it growing up wow. un until I was in like seventh grade. Um, yeah. I played the piano a few times, but it wasn't until he sat me down and, and he explained to me what worship was. And, um, and it wrecked me because he said that worship is really, is your response to your personal relationship with, with God. And I was like, man, I don't have a personal 
relationship mm-hmm. and that that wrecked me and and from that point on you know as you said like still had struggles you know still was definitely rebellious here and there but uh but that was the moment where i feel like you know the lord really you know i really accepted the lord and and um and, and put my faith fully in him so i i completely yeah. relate yeah amazing yeah that's that's a blessing yeah amen all right so this is a women's history month special and so yeah so i want to i want to make sure i ask some questions that really relate to to womanhood and motherhood um so so when you hear those two words what does that mean to you oh man there's just so much in it (laughs) it's not a simple word i would say um womanhood i i actually it's been a quite of a journey um, to say that I, I always had big dreams and ambitions as a kid and um, and then leadership too. You know, I would always be like leading and president of class and and I sometimes I felt like did God make a mistake <laughs> to be <make laughs> a woman instead of a man? <laughs> a lot of people would say things like, "Oh wow, you have amazing qualities that." man leaders should have you know and I'm like um yeah but you know there's always some kind of discrepancy between I I felt a little uncomfortable of like Mm. okay God created me this way and I'm a woman yeah but how does this this fit you know in this journey and this walk but it's been actually amazing last um so my daughter um I have two kids I the first one is five uh she's amazing her name is chaya she oh. her name means full of life wow. uh, in hebrew word and the second one he's um uh, he just turned 14 months uh today oh, and his, yeah. his his name is elisha and it means god is our salvation yeah. and also after the prophet but um <laughs> once i became mom i actually understood much much better about why God made me a woman and mother and what that meant. And I'm still discovering what that means really um, day to day. And cause there's just so much that I'm learning. I can't put it in just few words. Um, yeah, but there's something about um, the mother's love um, that only mothers know. Yeah. Um, and I didn't understand it until I became mom. Um, and I really actually go back to Isaiah 49, 15, that can a mother forget the baby at her breast and, you know, have no compassion at the child that she has born. Um, and Isaiah is talking about it in a way that, no, like she can't, but, you know, God is, is even more, his love is even more than mother's um, love. And he says, like, I will never forget you. So I, I felt um, I felt like God was really just deepening my understanding of like who God is and his love for us um, as a mom, as I'm getting to know um, who he is through mothering. Um, yeah, it's just incredible. Like laying down um, one's life to really just bring another life. I, that's just something only, you know, the Heavenly Father can do. So I feel like God is redeeming and restoring my womanhood and motherhood. And there's just so much. There's just so much. Yeah. yeah. I Yeah. You know how God says, like, I've written your name yeah. um, on my palms. And I'll never forget you. And even if... Like he does not slumber, he does not sleep. He will always protect you, yeah. and that is just the heart of you know, mother. And yeah, yeah um, the Lord is incredible, and I'm so thankful that God has made me a woman and a mom um, to know Him better, and also just help my children know this kind of love and also share that love with others um, who may have not experienced that. Um, 
So it's been a quite a journey, but amazing. Um, but I also must say, women, uh, motherhood has been a very much a refining tool um, personally too. Uh, you know, I have mentioned I've been a, always an ambitious, very ambitious person. And I've always like, even after I met the Lord, I had this big dreams of, Lord, send me to the world, you know, send me to the missions field yeah, yeah. where I can just preach the gospel and build a church and, you know, talk to thousands of people. That was, you know, my dream. Yeah. And one day I became mom and I realized I was at home with my little baby. And, you know, all of a sudden I'm just changing the diapers after diapers <laughs> and eating and cleaning up the floors and Cheerios and toys are always on the floor. I'm doing dishes and, um, but that's where I felt like I was like, no, like as much as you want to do stuff for me, this is where I want to meet you in the moment. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm in a season of, I'm home, you know, like, I mean, all of us are home, I guess with the pandemic, yeah. but with being a full-time mom like that's really something that I didn't necessarily sign up for if somehow I just happened to be here <laughs> in a way and God is like I want to show you my heart I want to change you before you try to do something for me I want to sh transform you into my likeness um so it's been a it's been a quite a journey and a very much a amazing refining tool um, to become more like him and to know him as a heavenly father just yes that's where i am yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amen amen so so on the note of, of just womanhood um are there any women in your life that you um admire or anyone in general that you admire or or, or any woman who have had an impact on your life yeah um definitely i mean i wouldn't be here without these women yeah. i i have to say my mom first um she's an incredible woman she i to this day i don't know how she did it she had three kids and she actually worked full-time to be able to support my dad even financially for the church because they planted the church when they got married, when they were very like young, you know, 24. She's worked every single day, um, you know, five, six days a week. Um, and, you know, every single day this for the kids and the church, she's just a sacrificial woman who prayed. And I, if I think, when I think about her, I think about her on her knees, just, praying, um, um, praising the Lord. And she physically, she may be a weak person, but she's a, such a strong woman of faith who's always held unto God, you know, um, in the good times and bad times. And she's really prayed and a lot for us and for the church, for those around her. Um, such a powerful woman of faith. I really admire her. Um, yeah, her just... Yeah, her priority to worship is just mm -hmm. amazing. And another woman I that helped me um, last, like during my first years of motherhood, um, her name is Maylon. Um, she is um, um, pastor's wife that we worked together um, when I was on staff at church too. Um, she's helped me to embrace the season um, fully and what it means to be present and be fully in the Lord um, while I'm um, doing my motherhood in, you know, at home with little kids crying and just chasing after them and cleaning up the floor, how to find joy, how to find uh, beauty in it. Just having also just bigger perspective you know not yeah. just you know it's so easy to get caught up in the moment when you're just going through motions and right. doing day-to-day -day mundane tasks of just doing stuff <laughs> um but she always reminded me 
there's so much beauty. I am shaping these beautiful souls that God has entrusted me. Um, then this is a job that God has given me and it's no one else's job. This is yeah. my job. Yeah. And God has allowed me to be mom to these kids. Um, I'm not always perfect. There are days it's hard, but you know, it's just incredible to know that I can be with them and I can teach them about God. I can pray with them. I can dance with them, sing praises together. Um, yeah, there's something about it. Just even at a young age, at you know, my daughter who's five, she already knows the Lord so well in such a special way. And then there are moments I'm like, wow, how does she know this? How does she have already like big questions about God and have faith, very childlike faith? Yeah. And I get ministered to by her. Um, yeah, so I, I'm very grateful for Milan, um, who's helped me through those tough years of my first year of motherhood and just embrace the season and be grateful and know that this is the day that God has given me. This is the season God has given me. Yeah, let me fully embrace it instead of trying to get to somewhere else, you know? Yeah. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Um, one of the things that I that I try to ask artists that come on is about what they're seeing in the Christian, um, specifically the Christian visual arts community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I notice with a lot of churches that that kind of gets um, kind of not like celebrated as much as music or mm -hmm. other different you know arts, and so. Um, how do you, I guess, first of, first of all, how, how do you, you know, what are you seeing in the Christian um, visual arts community? And, and how yeah. do you think the, the church can kind of champion it more? So I, I thought about this question, right? Mm -hmm. And I did my homework. And yeah, the implications of this visual art is huge. Mm -hmm. And because I've learned some, some yes. numbers and I was like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. So apparently, um, um, according to some research that's been done, like the most recent one, I guess, February, like to 2021, mm -hmm. apparently globally, there is um, 3.6 billion to almost some people say like 4 billion people in the world are on social media. And mm -hmm. that's, a, that's like over 50% of the world population. Yeah. And during the pandemic in 2020, um, the number just increased obviously people are just <laughs> on the internet and they're, right. they're trying to wait to you know find a way to be connected to other people um the social media is just huge a big yeah. part of our life it's something that you can't ignore <laughs> even yes. though you say like get off the phone get off the phone <laughs> but people are on the phone right mm -hmm. and i learned that um Facebook has 2.7 billion, um, YouTube has 2.2 billion users, and Instagram 1.3 billion. And I don't know if this number is entirely accurate, but some source says like internet users spend um, an average of like 144 minutes on social media per day. Mm. That's like over two hours yeah. a day. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I spent a lot of time on yeah, it Yeah, that's quite convicting. Yeah, I yeah. know, right? And <laughs> yeah, and the largest, I'm on Instagram a lot because I have the art account on the Instagram. Um, yeah. the, the largest demographic for Instagram is like 18 to 24 years old. Um, women are the majority of the largest population um and i guess people ask like what do you prefer on social media like do you prefer text you know there are images with just words images yeah. with images yeah. and images with videos and um um these researchers saying um yeah like 68 percent um saying they prefer images and 50 percent prefer videos and 30 percent prefer text over other things and I was like, this is, this is <laughs> incredible. And for churches to ignore this reality, 
thinking they can reach the generation that is so saturated in social media. Yeah. And that's just happening. It's not something that you can, they're not five-year-old, they're not 10 year old, even 10 year old, it's hard to tell them to stop, yeah, right? Right, right. And people are already on it so much. And, and the opportunity, yeah, I was thinking this is a big opportunity and also a responsibility that we have. Yeah. And if it's already a big part of our lives, how can churches not um, take responsibilities, right? Yeah. So, yeah, this is what. Um, it was like part of the reasons why I created my art account and I was already, I started creating um, once I became mom. So I, mm. I always loved art um, as a kid. I, I remember when I was seven, I, was, I would draw, I would write poems on it. I actually mm. wrote songs Wow. and I would just, yeah, I would just play. I would just put them in visual ways and I just enjoyed it so much. And my actually grandfather, um, he was a calligraphy teacher who wow. also did music and <laughs> um, yeah, art and just writing. Yeah. And yeah, art has been always been um, part of my life. And I actually sort of like took a break because I was so busy with other things and busy mm -hmm. with school, busy with ministry. Mm -hmm. And some people didn't even know I, could do art until I actually started doing art <laughs> once I became mom and mm -hmm. I started doing art um, personally so that I can um, spend time with the Lord through doing art yeah. and it was a very I just once I put that one stroke of like paint on the paper or somewhere yeah. I immediately feel the peace of you know the joy and just uh, the grace flowing um, and music too. Like I, there's just th those are the channels where I really encountered the Lord, yeah. and I started creating, and I started blessing other people with it. And people are like, you know, why don't you share? And and I was like, yeah, I'm already creating. Why don't I share mm -hmm. um, with more people? So I started uh, my art account, and um, yeah. And then I was like, during when I worked for my church. Um, I have more opportunities to share about my faith, you know, publicly, right? Share. Yeah. And, um, I was on worship team. You wow. share. Not only you sing, you also get to share, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are more opportunities. And But once I became mom, I was like, oh, man, I don't know how to share. <laughs> like, I want to share. <laughs> I want to share. Um, yeah, so this was just like a very natural way for me to start sharing. Um, but I also realized I'm a visual person. So yeah. if... Um, I remember things better. I remember the message better if it's expressed in a visual, very visual way. I just, yeah. it, images sticks better than words. Right. And that's just, that's just what it is, right? Um, yeah, so for churches to not take this seriously is a mistake. I mean, this is already happening. It's not something that you can tell them to yeah, go off social media just go on your Bible and people are gonna go on the social media after reading their Bible. And it's so hard to say to a young person who doesn't know God, hey, go listen to this sermon that's 45 minutes long, right? Like they, I'm like, oh, 45 minutes, 30 minutes sermon, they may feel uncomfortable or they may feel like, uh, I don't know, I don't know about this, yeah, this stuff. So yeah, for us uh, Christian artists, I feel like we have a huge opportunity. When I create my art, I don't, I wanted to create something that speaks yeah. visually about God's grace, God's creation, God's love, God's power, God's presence, God's restoration, God's um, just redemption. Yeah. And when it's, yeah, visually communicated and, they say if it's like not interesting, they will just scroll it off, right? <laughs> you just, just scroll it off, scroll it off. You, yeah. You're not gonna stay on it unless it's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's a reality that we need to take seriously, and this is an opportunity, and it's responsibility too to be able to 
connect with the generation, connect with, it's not even just generation, our like young millennials, right? Yeah. It's yeah. anyone, it's 50, over 50% of the population. If we can speak gospel in every way and in any way that we can share the gospel and in every opportunity, yeah. yeah, make every opportunity, right? Like take that um, seriously and just share it. I. I don't know. I think that's just the natural way to do it. And I, we should, we should use it. And this is a platform. I know it's set up by Facebook and Instagram, but it's a platform that's free platform form that we could reach people. So yeah, outreach should be done um, in every way in person, of course, like, you know, loving our neighbors next door, but also the people who are just on the phone that would not see at their neighbors. And you might, your feed might be the only feed that they may come across. And if my feed can speak about Jesus and his grace and restoration and just hope, and people are really hopeless these days, you know, they need hope. Um, there's so much despair and negativity out there. Um, even for me, like, I feel like, and when I scroll things through, I get discouraged and I get bogged down. I get, I start to fear, you know, I start to have like some kind of anxiety because of all things, right? Yeah. Um, pandemic not ending and riots and just, just injustice and things that are just so crazy in the world. And you can get just so discouraged, but what if our one feed, one picture, speaks about God and if that's the only thing that somebody sees today and let it be used by the Lord you know and I believe that I believe every opportunity can be used so yeah amen I, yeah I think we should do it right <laughs> yeah 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 I never even really considered the the statistics from social media and how that kind of plays into it as well because like as you mentioned it's a big thing. Like everyone is on social media. And okay. I think, you know, now um, kids are growing or kids are being born knowing how right. to use a cell phone, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they know how to do everything. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but they, they're coming out the womb now knowing how to work a cell phone. It's incredible. Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. so, and, and so I think increasingly you're seeing that more and more people are becoming visual um, right. more visual based. And so I think it is, it is, um, it would be, you know, it would be beneficial for the church and for those who don't even know about Christ to, to see an art piece and, you know, it right. helps challenge them and helps, um, you know, help them consider text mm -hmm. and, um, and what the artist is trying to convey. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. When I create my art, I think of it both ways. So how can I, one way I want to uplift the believers who know the Lord already, you know, they need encouragement and they need a reminder, right? Daily. I, I'm a forgetful person. And if I don't, if I don't read the word, like a few days, I might be a bad person. I don't know. You know it's just, I might be doing crazy things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one way I want to minister to the believers, but another way I also want to reach the non-believers. I know it's hard. Um, sometimes, it's almost like, how do we do that, right? But I don't, so I think another reason why I started creating pieces that's not, that doesn't have Jesus on it right away, but I accompany with the message, you know, in the writing and the caption um, and why I created this piece. And that's per my personal story, but personal testimonies are powerful, right? Yeah. So yeah, like I just wanted to, be able to reach as much as I can, mm -hmm. <laughs> encourage the believers, yeah, reach the unreached um, that may never see anything like it. Yeah, that may have never ever heard of gospel. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what I love about love about your art and and other Christian artists who are doing that because I, I do truly believe that um, just the the simplicity of art and then it's like it's a simple thing but it's also complex and mm -hmm. um and it just it really helps you um as a as a visual 
learner, you know, right. um, it just helps you kind of look at our piece and, and consider things a little more. So, and, yeah. and you also can look at it as like a way of like um, breaking the walls mm -hmm. down. Um, yeah, speaking on non-Christians who may see an art piece and it becomes conversational. Um, right. And, yeah. and that's always like, I feel like that's a big component with um, sharing the gospel. It's mm -hmm. all relational, conversational, um, and it's just really being able to just build some kind of relationship where you can kind of break down those walls where then you can you can hit them with the, the gospel. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 I I was really blessed by other artists that you've been interviewing, you know, like I feel yeah. like all of us are kind of different in the way that we express, but yeah. everyone relates to things differently. And yet some people for some people like fine arts, some people, comics, some people, um, it's just some simple illustration or just yeah. some like simple calligraphy or floral arrangement or sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whatever gift God has given us, we have the responsibility to use that for the glory of God. And it's hard um, to do it faithfully, mm -hmm. but I think we have the responsibility and calling. And yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Let's get into your art. <laughs> speaking of speaking of the art, let's get into your art. And I, okay. I see some beautiful art behind you. Uh, just incredible oh. artwork. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so um, this the first set of art, um, nursery animal art with scripture verses. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that? And I'm going to post the uh, the pictures. Um, okay. and, and post it so everyone yeah. can see, yeah. So um, um, these are very special, in a way, a little personal. Um, when I became mom, I realized I really needed encouragement <laughs> throughout the day. <laughs> so I needed reminders uh, all around the house. Yeah. You know, God's word, whatever refreshes my heart and mind and my my soul to be able to be a good mom and you know god honoring mom i needed the truth right there whenever i turn <laughs> so i needed that in the kitchen nursery over the diaper changing table just all around the house so you want, yeah people <laughs> who have come to our house they're like wow it's a lot of stuff around the house <laughs> um yeah, but I, I created these pieces, especially for the nursery or even just kids' rooms um, for the kids and also yeah. for the moms. Um, these are um, the ones that you were seeing. It's probably the ones with the mommy and me um, yeah. animal pieces and where I wanted to, to be honest, I wanted to encourage moms more than the kids. I mean, I'm, of course the kids, but mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to encourage the moms that, yeah, you're not alone as you're mothering your own children, God is also mothering you. God is also fathering you. He, the have good, good heavenly father, he gives you strength to be able to mother your own children. So I wanted to create it visually with the scriptures, you know, do not fear, um, hold on to God's strength. And there's no fear in perfect love. And yeah, you can rise on eagle's wings and yeah, take heart. God has overcome. He has overcome the world. And there are tribulations even in your motherhood. Yeah. And, but he has given you grace. And yeah, come to me, all you who are weary and um, burdened. I will give you rest because we all need it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wanted to create these pieces to encourage the children, of course. But to be honest, more for the moms <laughs> so they are also encouraged as a mother because a lot of times they feel very isolated and lonely and feel very discouraged and whenever they you know kind of fail yeah. you yelled at your kid and you snapped or you feel like you just just failed horribly there are moments like that and wow. and i needed god to remind me no you, you haven't failed my grace is more sufficient and mm -hmm always sufficient for you and i'll be with you i'll be with you yeah. um so yeah those are very personal but i also wanted to be a blessing to many homes yeah. so those are 
those pieces. Yeah. Amen. I, I love how you kind of explained of how, you know, your heart really was also for the, the parent, the mother. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's something that I feel like we often can um, forget is the mother. You know, I, I see now a lot of there's some new businesses that are arising where they're doing like care packages for for mothers who have just had babies and yeah um and so that's in the back of my mind now so i'm not married yet but you know that yeah. one day i have to think that now i can't forget about my wife my future wife the mother yeah. of my kids because i think so often and, and it's you know it's great that we are putting all our attention on the kids like that's we, we should mm -hmm. but um can't forget about the mother because mm -hmm. there, as you said, like there's so much that you guys go through, um, mm -hmm. just the mental, everything physically, yeah. you know. So yeah, I like yeah. that. I like My that. heart really goes out for the new moms and young moms because I've been there. It was probably just one of the toughest years, the first year of being a mom, because mm -hmm. you know you all of a sudden kind of lose control of your schedule like women women like control I don't know if you know but yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah and and our sleep sleep yeah. deprived and you're just constantly tired you feel like you, your your life is just upside down changed yeah. um, but you have this like tiny infant in your hand that God has given you and you're not sure you're doing a good job and um, at that moment I just I was so encouraged whenever just I would get a text from my mentor and she would say, you're doing a wonderful job. You're being the one mom that God has called you to be to your child and, and you're doing a wonderful job, even if I may have not been, but that was just so encouraging. So yeah, I have a heart for these women. Amen. Yep. Amen. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. The, the second set of pieces, God's faithfulness through seasons. Yes. Um, so I love nature and I love going on hikes, going to the beach and the mountains and just a field or just looking to the sky or the stars, wherever you can kind of, I say, I like to zoom out of our, my life because sometimes you get so caught up in your life that you're so zoomed in that you're kind of like, so focused on your own thing you know you're you're so self-focused you're self-absorbed but when you really look at the creation of god god you know it, you realize oh, you can't breathe wow yeah you know what i may be struggling in this moment but god has purpose in my life and he has not left me he has not forsaken me he's here right here with me in my journey and sometimes it's so hard to see it in the midst of the journey. So I wanted, I created those, I painted those pieces um, to be able to remind myself and to other people that, you know what, in the cold, wintry, snowy days, God is faithful. He's there in the snow. He's there in the sky and he, in the, you know, freezing cold weather. He's still a good, good father. He's not far away in the beautiful blooming spring. And when everything comes alive, of course we can celebrate God's faithfulness, but yeah. he's, he's still there, you know, in the midst of every single little seed sprouting out. Like there's a touch that only God can um, show, right, to us. Yeah. So I, I just, yeah, God is there. God is faithful. Yeah, and you see this um, beautiful field, uh, sunflower or just golden field where yeah. things are harvesting and just um, ripening and you see God's faithfulness after a long hard labor, you know, mm -hmm. summer or, yeah, I just, I just love um, capturing those moments to remind people that he is faithful. He is good God. He is over all things. He holds everything together. Um, he who began a good work in us will carry it unto the completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And, and that's who he is. He who promised will never fail. He who promised um, will complete it. And he's the author and perfecter of my faith and our faith. So that's just a theme that I always go back to. I 
I just love being reminded. I, I'm a forgetful person again. Yeah, we all need that reminder. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone, I think, just has to always be reminded of it because, you know, there's so much that each of us face in life, and um, you know, I think of in the Psalms of David numerous times where he had to recall just the goodness yeah. of God. I think of my one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, Lamentations, uh, Lamentations yeah. three, where um, just you read it and it's just a lot of sombering and depression, and mm -hmm. then you get to the middle and it's and I recall that great is your faithfulness and new Amen. every morning are your, are your mercies. And so I think it's, yeah. it's so crucial for us to, to remind ourselves of the goodness mm -hmm. of God. It's easy, it's easy to forget when you, when yep. you set your eyes on these worldly things and, mm -hmm. and you kind of pay attention to that more than, you know, mm -hmm. looking at Christ and, and keeping your eyes right. on Christ. Uh, it's easy. It's, easy, it's right. easy to fall into it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I love this one of the, the snow. I, I love snow. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we had a lot here. Yeah, well, well, see, because I know you, you say you, you used to live in this area around yeah. here, so you may be familiar familiar with how we get winter weather. Oh. So it's like it's hit or miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the last I used to walk in the snowy weather a lot mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah, the last four weeks we've had these threats of oh snowstorms, and we have been it's been a fail each time. It's been just, it's been mostly icy rain and uh, oh. it's, it's terrible. I like but you're going to get cherry blossoms very soon. So that's right. true. That's yeah, true. It's very beautiful there. So yeah. that's something. I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right. This next one, make room. Yeah. Uh, man, that's a personal piece. Um, so in the beginning of the year, um, to be frankly honest, going into 2021, I wasn't super excited, you know, with the pandemic and and I was like a little tired, fatigue. I feel like mentally or physically, even emotionally, um, I felt like, man, I don't know if there's a really newness, you know, in the new year. Um, things are still the same. Things are still tough and hard. And so many people have lost their lives and um, loved one's lives and yeah just th there's a lot of sense of grief and despair and still I feel like tiredness and fatigue I would say overall in the society and that we live in so I was not quite excited to be honest going into 2021 but and I started cleaning the house <laughs> and started getting all the junk out of my house and organizing and donating and um, making room um, and I felt like I was like you know what this is what I'm doing with you I want to make room I want you to make room for me um, and what does that even mean and I was like I was like yeah keep cleaning physically and also keep cleaning in your heart you know make room for me and that's been reflected in my art journey um, I um, I call my art our journey because it's really been a journey and it, it will always be a journey. Um, it's not something that I completely defined. It's not something that is just one thing. Um, I felt like God has something that he's speaking to me every season and I expressed that in art. And God was like, I know you have fears of doing something that you feel like you can't do, but just make room and trust me and start doing it so yeah I I our place is not pretty uh, not that big our home is um, small so I had this a little bit of not anxiety but you know creating something big yeah. creating something big pieces and I was like oh, should I order those like big canvases I don't know if I have room for that but I was like you can always make room God was like you you should you trust me I, I know you know I know you feel like you can't do it, but I'm giving you new things. So trust me and follow my vision and lead. So yeah, I am. And with that, I felt like spiritually too, God was like, tell me, I have set you free from all these things that you've been wrestling with the last four, 
four or five years. I have healed you. I have dealt with these things. I want you to be set free. And there's something that kind of, I don't know, broke in my journey. I felt like, yeah, you know, God, we know in our head, we know in our Bible, we know in our Bible knowledge that God has set us free. So live free. It's so easy to say it, but day to day, it, we kind of bring those chains back. Almost like, I feel more comfortable with those chains. So I'm going to just put it back, <laughs> even if Christ said it, it was all gone. So I felt like God was like, get rid of those. Really get rid of those. I have set you free. Like you are free indeed in Christ. You're a new creation and you can run. You don't have to feel like you cannot. You, you, I am giving you permission to be free and live free for the Lord and just run after the Lord. Um, so it's, I'm still trying to figure out what that really means in my own personal walk, but um, I started creating more abstract art pieces where um, I felt like God was calling me to start creating more. And it's been so fun. <laughs> it's been incredibly fun and there's so much joy and I love it. Um, this is like, I know this isn't um, necessarily for the ministry necessarily, but I wanted to share that personal story because I felt like people could relate to it because a lot of us live as Christians, um, live as though we are still bound, as though we're still slaves to those sins and painful memories or things that have been done to you. And Christ really calls us, no, 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 you are my children, beloved children. I have set you free. I pay for that. I pay for your life. So live abundantly as I desired, you know. So I felt like, yeah, Lord, I'm going to do that. I'm going to obey. I'm going to do that in my spiritual walk and even in my art. I am going to be faithful. I don't know where this is leading and how you're going to use it, but I'm going to do it um, for you, for your glory. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Have you ever heard the song, Make Room by Community Music? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When, I, when I saw I the title, the that is one of my favorite worship songs right now. It, yes. I love the song. My friend who lives in Canada, she sent me the song, like, have you read the, have you heard this song? Yeah. They're, yes. they're awesome. I had an opportunity to uh, to see them literally the week before the pandemic last year. Um, oh. Our church plant, we went down to Florida for it was a big church planting convention called Exponential. And every year, yeah. Um, because I believe they're the pastor at um, Community Church, I guess it's called. Okay. In Chicago. Yeah. He leads that big church planting conference. Um, and so they, every year, they go and they lead worship and phenomenal it's a husband and wife duo and then their their band so I, yeah. Yeah, I love that song and it's another new one they have out that uh they played last year it's finally out um nothing I can't remember the name of it I can't remember the name of it but it's good yeah, you have to send it to me yeah I'll have to send it to you it's really good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 all right this last one wherever you lead me now that's behind you isn't it yes um, yeah yeah um <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is like going along with make making room yeah um, basically yeah as i make room i think god is calling me to somewhere not maybe not necessarily physically mm -hmm. i i'm ready though we're me and my husband we're ready to yeah. go wherever he leads us um yeah I, we don't know. We don't yeah. know yet. We're trying to be faithful. We're trying to be ready. Um, yeah. So we can go whenever he says go. Amen. So you can pray for us. I, yes, I will. I will yeah. definitely pray for that. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a great heart posture to have. Not everyone has that. Um, one of one of my favorite pastors to listen to, guy I, I admire. You may, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, his name is David Platt. And yeah. um, and he leads uh, McLean Bible Church up the road from, from me. He's about mm -hmm. 20 minutes yeah. away. I've, 
go on a visit. That's that's my I call that my uh my uh, retreat church. So when I when I have a retreat off, you know, a week off, whatever, yeah. I normally if I'm having a staycation or something, I'll always go out to McLean and I, I love yeah. David Platt and, and that's like his heart. Um mm -hmm. every every other month I feel like he's he's basically telling his congregation, you need to go somewhere. Like do something, you know, and just mm -hmm. but just and planning in their heart, just a, a heart for yeah. missions. Um, and not yeah. necessarily just moving to a different country, but he's yeah. always letting people know like there are lots of people who have not heard the yeah. gospel yet. And yeah. it's it's important for us as obeying yeah. the Great Commission to have that yeah. heart to want to do to do missions. So yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, I said even after I became Christian or I became serious about my faith, you know, I had this big ambition, like, God, like, send me, send me somewhere, send me anywhere. Um, but, you know, I also said, once I became mom, God was like, you know, I know you want to change the world, but yeah. let me change you first. So it's almost like this obedience in both ways. Like, wherever I am, right now, wherever you are, wherever I am in this bedroom, in this kitchen, in this yeah. nursery room, in this walk that I take every day, be faithful and be, be completely present with him so I can, I wouldn't miss what he's calling me to do even today, living, you know, in faithfulness for today, yeah. but at the same time also being like constantly being ready and equipping and preparing for whatever he calls me to do, he calls us to do. So it's like, sometimes when we're so focused on like, God, like wh what is, what's next, what's next? Mm. So easy, that was me, you know, yeah. so easy for, for us to get anxious about, you know, the future and kind of miss out on the opportunities that God has placed us um, right in front. Um, because I know right now, like I, even during pandemic, I got to know this neighbor, another mom and a daughter in another building that lives right by us. And um, yeah, we've been hanging out. We've been like doing play dates with masks on. Um, but it's, that's an opportunity God has given me today as a mom, as where I am, you know, just where I am, God is telling me to share, share the faith and share, encourage and build relationships. Mm -hmm. And I cannot ignore that and do try to like go to some other country <laughs> or some like do great missions or church planting because mm -hmm. if I don't know how to be faithful in little things that God has given me today, I will not be able to handle the bigger stuff that God mm -hmm. may have for me tomorrow. So yeah, that's like something that I've been learning last five years. And that's something, it's not easy for, I think, our generation, because we want to, we want the next thing, you know, yeah. we want the best thing, we want the next thing, we want the coolest thing, yeah. even for God, you, you want to be on the coolest platform or whatnot. But God is calling us to be like, are you stewarding, you know, like mm -hmm. the stewardship has been really big also on my mind, even as I do art, um, I may not be, a, I don't know, doing full-time art, you know, 24 seven, creating lots of big pieces and having great businesses or something at the moment, but am I being faithful? Am I being a good steward of motherhood that he's given me right now at the moment with these two precious children am i being faithful even with my art like with my art account even though it may not seem a lot it may not be i may feel like oh, is that doing anything you know like am i making any difference yeah. anybody seeing actually gain, getting blessed <laughs> but i have to do my part and saying Lord, yes, I, I'm here. I'm here today. I'll be right here. And I will be, yeah, where you want me to be, even today, just today. So I think living today faithfully really builds on the next whatever he has for me. So that's something I 
I'm not so good at, but I'm working on because yeah. I'm a work in progress. Yeah. We all are. We all are. Oh, that's, a, that's a good word. That is a good word. Yeah. I definitely receive it. <laughs> because that, yeah yeah that uh yeah that's a good word and definitely a timely one because I think you know and even when just thinking about 2020 and, and everybody I feel like has dealt with something in 2020 that 2020 impacted people and um mm -hmm. maybe you know the Lord kind of changed your plans yeah you yeah plans like like I told you like for Burke Church we plan to start in October and we thought mm -hmm. we were going to start in October. We had planned all this, this great stuff. And mm -hmm. October came around and, you know, we weren't able to do it. And, um, and so we've kind of like settled into this mode where it's like, you know, Lord, you have your way, you know, we're going mm -hmm. to step back. Like, yes, we're going to be good stewards and make sure that we, we plan and, and try to do things mm -hmm. in excellence. But at the end of the day, it's your will and your way, you know, we're walking with you and you lead us. So, and that's Amen. yeah that's that just that comes back to just this this um this th this state of humility and um yeah. and just submission and yielding mm -hmm. to uh yeah. to the lord which is so hard to do um, yeah and but sometimes that, he's, yeah sometimes yeah. he just like snatches the rug under you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you get impatient i get yes. impatient. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but i was also blessed by your um, obedience to do this art um, studio and carrying on like your grandfather's legacy and also trying to build this um, yeah visual yeah. theology and community artists Christian artists yeah. um, a lot of times you know when the the beginning seems so small mm -hmm. it's so easy to get discouraged or feel like am I making any difference and yeah but I, I'm I was very blessed by your faithfulness to, you know, do what God calls you to do. And that's yeah. just a blessing. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I, I tell you, I've been so blessed by, by you and, and the others that I've, that I've talked to so far. Um, just, I think one thing that's just been, that stuck out to me is that I've, I've talked to now so many people from so many different walks of life uh, mm -hmm. a couple people from different countries and just just mm -hmm. seeing how the Lord is moving in their lives yeah. is just a testament to the fact that God is God is moving in mm -hmm. the lives of people not just in my local community or my, my right. local church but all around and um and I, I think so so often we get caught up in trying and being a little small-minded and mm -hmm. we just we we only you know think of God and what we see in our surround sur surroundings and so it's true. like He's so much bigger than than that. He's moving across yeah. the country and you know yeah. different states of the world. And so, yeah, it's it's been awesome. And so I, I've been blessed by your work and um, mm -hmm. and so I'm just I'm so thankful for you coming on and 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 just blessing blessing us with your wisdom and and, and knowledge and, and your art is it's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you so much for yeah for having me on and. I'm, I'm really blessed i was blessed just getting ready putting up this wall and oh. and yeah just really blessed yeah amen amen thank you yeah so before we before we log off um do you want to share your social media handles and if anything you have going on feel free to share that as well um yeah i have facebook and facebook page and instagram um chummy's art journey Okay. And I am working on my site um, very slowly. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where that's leading. Actually, you can pray for me and okay. you can pray for me because I don't, um, yeah, one thing I've been thinking is, yeah, I don't want to trans, I don't want to conform to the patterns of the world, yeah. even in my art, because um, there are so many people telling you if you want to be successful, do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. Um, if you, there's so many strategies you people tell you know tell you that you, this, these are the steps that you should be doing yeah. and things that you should be doing to, you know, make your name or whatnot. But I don't know if that's that's my calling. And um, motherhood and art are just 
just where I am, right? Yeah. That's something that is very big in my walk with the Lord right now. So I want to be able to, I don't know, do something that God is calling me to do. I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah. that's something I'm working on. But yeah, yeah you man. can find me on Instagram. I'm, I do have a little Etsy shop, but that's just a way for people to be able to share my art. Um, yeah. Um, Amen. Um, actually, before I log off, I guess today I today's devotional was uh, um, on joy of the Lord. So mm. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And I created these pieces and I thought I would share. Oh, wow. Oh, those um, are so cool. Yeah. They all have the same verse but i needed the joy so badly so i put all on yeah. all three I love that. <laughs> joy of the lord your strength that's what amen. i wanted to say amen you my yeah yeah i love that i love that oh man well, it was so great having you on thank you so much for coming on really enjoyed thank you. it yeah yeah me too it was, it was so fun thank yeah. you all right guys so make sure you follow chami and um, subscribe to her and like her uh, uh, Facebook page and follow her on Instagram. We will, I will see you next week on Visible Theology. Peace.